four o'clock in the morning. Hello everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. As you can see, I'm set up for a blind tasting. I'm um, not going to do this every Friday, but I, I'd like to do it now. A couple of people mentioned that they like that format, so I'm going to go with that today. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to say I made a decision, thanks to uh, my, my buddy Bernsey and a couple other people, is that I'm going to do two videos a week. I'm going to do one on Tuesday, Friday. I'm going to try to stick to that schedule. I think that's enough. Uh, sort of the thing that included me in was that I did a, a Monday and then a Wednesday, and Wednesday didn't get that many views. Um, this gives me time to kind of get those out there, uh, build up my views. If I get requests for more videos, I'll do them. But for now, uh, maybe you could let me know at Stan the Wine Man on Twitter. You can uh, make a comment down here. Let me know what you think of that. Do you think two's enough? You want some more than that? Or, you know, every once in a while I might throw one in there just because. I am tasting uh, Cote de Rhone today. And the reason for that, and it's kind of, now they're not all Cote de Rhone. Let me, let me put it this way I'm doing blends. I am doing, uh, some of these are New World GSM. Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedra, that's a new term now that, well not that new, but GSM blends are becoming quite popular in my store and I know in the United States they're becoming very popular. People like the GSM blends, whether it's more Syrah, less Grenache, more Mouvedra, less Syrah, whatever it is, they are very popular. In fact, my last wine tasting I did, uh, the GSM blend was the number one selling wine at the event. We didn't sell at the event, but it was the number one ordered wine at the event. The curious thing about that is if I could put a GSM blend as my pick of the month, and I'd sell a lot of it. If, if I did a Cote de Rhone, I wouldn't sell hardly any. It could be just peculiar to this area that I work in, but it seems that people do not understand Cote de Rhone uh, and they, they, they shy away from them. And rather, a Cote de Rhone is a GSM blend in a lot of cases, Grenache, Syrah, Mavedra. So it's kind of curious that, that, you know, people are going for the new world stuff that has the same blend as the old world. Maybe it's the style, maybe it's the dirt leather, all that sort of thing that they don't like, who knows. Um, but a Cote de Rhone is simply a blend. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, I tasted um, a Cote de Rhone with uh, one of the sales reps yesterday and I was really impressed with it and I said you know what I want to do a Cote de Rhone blend so I went a Cote de Rhone GSM uh, blind tasting I went through my stuff down down in my cellar and I came out with four bottles of wine so let's get started right away I don't want to drag this on too long number one and like I said there's two New World GSM blends and there's two Cote de Rhone hold on just a minute I'll be right back Forgot my pen. Got to put down my my uh, grade and so I know where to rank them. Number one, like I said, and maybe you know if you feel like commenting, and I have gotten a few more comments lately, which I really like. I love getting comments. Maybe you could tell me why you think Cote de Rhone doesn't sell very well in our area, or maybe in your area also. Maybe you've noticed the same sort of phenomena that I've noticed. Very famous uh, GSM blend is uh, Chateau de Pomp. Um, spillage there. Okay, let's see what we get on the nose. I'm getting a lot of like red plums and red berries, a little bit of red flowers. Interesting, kind of a little chocolate tones coming through on the back side. Yeah, definitely more towards a red fruit profile. Ah, here comes the sun. I don't know how these are affecting my, uh, I'm really making these bright. I have to find maybe some way to block out the window just a little bit because it can get pretty bright in here. 
A little bit of licorice too. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice kind of plushness in the mouth. You know, the, the, the tannins are kind of soft, but I'm getting a little bit of crushed rock sort of minerality on the back side of this, which would make me think this might be one of the Cote de Rhone's. Just remember, it's Cote de Rhone, not Cotes de Rhone. There is an S at the end. But if you even care about that stuff, you know, and I don't really get all wigged out about it. I do have a buddy that uh, knows his French stuff pretty good, and he's always correcting me if I slip and say Cotes de Rhone. It's Cote de Rhone, if you even care. You want to sound like you know what you're talking about, to say Cote de Rhone, out of southern, the southern Rhone Valley. And then they have particular areas in the Rhone Valley that have their own designation. Vacaraz is one, Roussillon, those types of areas. But just in a broad general sense, southern Rhone, they blend from different areas called Cote de Rhone. And it's kind of like Columbia Valley, you know, where we have... Uh, you know, maybe a lot of sub appellations within the larger appellation of Columbia Valley. So it's true with Cote de Rhone where there's sub appellations inside of the larger appellation of Cote de Rhone. Kind of meaty on the palate. A little bit, good red fruit coming through. I got a little bit of a red licorice component that I thought was interesting, but really mineral driven on the backside. In fact, the minerals hold on, and then I get a little red flower hit right on the, right on the very, very end of the finish. Good balance, good structure. I like this wine a lot. Not very spicy, so I'm I, I'm just assuming there's not a whole lot of Grenache because Grenache adds some spiciness to it, but not all the time. It's not consistent. Grenache is oh not always consistent, although I do get a little bit of white pepper on the back side of this one. I like this wine. I'm guessing number one might be old world. I'm, I'm putting my neck out on that one. I like the structure. I like the minerality on the back side, but I'm kind of a sucker for that sort of thing. Let me give it a grade here. All right. Let's move on. I like that one. Of course, I really like Cote de Rhone. I like GSM blends. I really do. And I, I'm really frustrated sometimes that I cannot get some of my customers to really go for these wines. Although I did have a Sable that I put as my pick of the month. It did pretty good actually. And, and I think maybe because it had a little bit more fruit to it, a few people tried it, really jumped all over it. Now, that being said, I do have a lot of customers, well, not a majority, but quite a few customers that do like the um, number two. There it is, right in the sunshine there. Number two. Okay, let's see what we get on the notes. Thinking number one was an old world wine. I could be wrong. Ooh, this has a lot of uh, ooh, cinnamon coming through. I like the nose on this. I get that cinnamon sort of nutmeg thing going on, which is, I like that. Kind of a dusty component coming through, like a dried cardboard thing. I'm getting a little chocolate on this one too. And this is kind of like in the fruit category, it's kind of lingering between cherries and currants. Just from the nose, I'm saying New World on this. You know, a lot of times I've noticed Cote de Rhone, you don't get as much of that kind of baking spice cinnamon thing going on. But really a lot of nutmeg and cinnamon. Very cool on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Yeah, still on the palate, you get that kind of lingering between currants and cherries. It's kind of blended together. Leans towards the current side. 
a little bit of chocolate coming through. This has definite white pepper on the back side. I can feel it on my tongue, like a little white pepper thing going on. The chocolate tones come through kind of underneath all that, the fruit. I'm guessing New World on number two. I love the nose. Much more fruit on this one. Nice richness on the mid palate. And it, that goes into the finish quite a bit. I like it. I like it a lot. Definitely different. The minerality is not there on this one. So I'm definitely willing to say this is new world. Okay. But I like it. I, I think it's, it's, it's different than number one. Has a lot of similarities, but it does not finish with the minerality. It finishes with the white pepper. Yeah, good stuff. And that chocolate, it doesn't go over the top though. The fruit stays in balance, which I like. I don't like it. It's not goopy. Has good acidity underneath. Kind of keeps that structure going on. Yeah, that's, yeah. So remember, these are similar blends. Grenache Sarah Mavedra, Old World, New World. So, but that one, that was, that's really good. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my score on this one because I just think it deserves, yeah. I like the balance. I like the fruit, of course, as a lot of us do. But I like the fact that that white pepper comes through on the finish. I like the structure. I like the flow across the palate. It's just, a, there's a lot of good things about that wine. I like it. Wine number two. Number three. I was gonna throw a Shatniff to pop in here, but I, yeah, yeah, it's not really fair. Different level than these, most of the Cote de Rhone's. Now I've had a Shatniff to pop that I really didn't like. And part of that is because it's new, you know, if it's a, if it needs, Shadow to Pop needs age. Although recently there's been a couple of 13s that I thought were pretty good. Okay, number three. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a little dirtiness a little, and a lot of licorice. I just got a big licorice hit there. There's an interesting, like, uh, it, like wafer chocolate, you know, what, what, uh, like tw uh, Twix, or what's the other one? The, the Kit Kat, that's what I'm getting. Little Kit Kat action on the nose. Got a lot of boysenberry coming through on this one. This is more of the berry, kind of boysenberry, brambleberry nose. And then like a little bit of four floor on the back end. The nose on this one could go either way, new world, old world. Uh, so, so far I think we got an old world, a new world, and this, I'm not sure yet. Let's take, let's see what we get on the palette. Unless my palate is deceiving me, this is definitely New World wine. A lot of chocolate on the mid palate. In fact, that's overriding. They get that kind of Kit Kat chocolate thing going on right in the mid palate, and it goes right into the finish. I'm still getting it. A little bit of white pepper on the back side of this one. Not as much as number two, but it's still there. Big, full body wine. I mean, plush on the palate. And again, a lot of licorice coming through. And the boysenberry is almost buried, the boysenberry is almost buried by the chocolate tones that are coming through on this. Get a little bit of tobacco on the back end. Good balance on this wine. A little um, less structured than number two, but still very good. I could see people really going nuts over this one. I mean, just a nice, 
flow across the palate and then it finishes clean. I like it. I like this one. I definitely think it's New World. So far, all of these have been really good. So, so far, I love it when they're all good. That always makes it a lot easier. Okay. So I'm guessing two New World and row, Old World. Let's see. Okay, number number four. Let's see what we get on the nose. <laughs> Sometimes it's just tricky this whole stage thing. Definitely tobacco, dirt, rocks. A little bit of current notes coming through. A little bit of black plum on this one. Definitely red flowers. There's a lot of things. Everything on this one, on the nose on this one, tells me old world. And I like the licorice notes that are coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. That's a really good bottle of wine. I, I like the, the acidity that underlies the fruit. I get, I get um, blackberries, I get currants, I get a little bit of black plum climbing through on this one. Tobacco underneath, definitely kind of a, a minerality on the finish. Now that's another one. Minerality is not in the dictionary. I guess I need to submit. I guess we can all submit that minerality is uh, put into the dictionary. It's definitely a word so many wine people use. I know even um, the average wine consumer will use it many times, so it really should be in the dictionary. Good initial attack, attack of fruit up front, but then that red flower comes through. Then as it goes across the palate, nice flow. Get a little grippy kind of minerality on the finish. I like this wine, great structure on this wine. Great balance of fruit and minerality and acidity. Yeah. Okay, I think this is old world. And I'm gonna go, there we go, okay. So we did them all, now let's see what order they would go into. Let's see, in uh, last place would be, they were all good, would be number three, okay. No, actually number one would be last place. Number two, number three, <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna keep this wrong because I actually doofed it and put the score right underneath the, the letter, anyway. Number three came in sec, uh, third. In second place, number four. And in first place, number two. Okay, so let's see what we got. In last place with a B, B plus, which is really respectable grade for a wine. I've got the, and I called this uh, number one, I called Old World. This is the Kermit Lynch Cote de Rhone 2014. And I didn't get to look up the price, but I believe it's around $15. There you go. See that? Okay. So the good wine um, didn't have the oomph that the other, the other three did, but still very good. Nice bottle of wine. It wouldn't be an 80 percenter wine in my, in, in my opinion. And then in third place with a straight up B plus, number three, which I called New World, the Kevin White 
Winery, La Fraternite, 2014 red wine. Uh, this uh, is a blend of 60% Grenache, 32% Movedra, and 8% Syrah. I love Kevin White. I give him a B plus for this wine. Um, right there. Good stuff. $28, so certainly not cheap. 2014 was a good vintage. I'm just going to look if, uh, on this uh, Kermit Lynch wine if you put the blend. Nope. Anyway, so yeah, it, you know, it is a new world wine so far. I've hit them right on as far as what they were. And in uh, third place, or second place, excuse me, with a B plus, A minus, I really like this wine. I guessed it as old world. This is the uh, 2015 La Jazine Beeler P. Pere et Fils Cote de Rhone Villages. So when it says Cote de Rhone Villages, it means it comes from certain villages. So there's a little more selective uh, fruit picking and fruit sourcing of this wine. And this rolls in at, I believe, $12. Yes, $12. Bucks. And uh, there you go. Really like this wine. This is the one I thought I had a good balance. I, I said old world and it was old world. So there you go. So far, so good. Now I know I got the, this one right. Number In first place, number two with a straight up A minus. Straight up A minus. 2015 Han uh, GSM, Grenache Syrah Mubedra. And I'll see if it gives a blend here. It is 59% Grenache, 33, can't read that, 33% Syrah and 8% Movedra. Hopefully those work out. Yes, they should. Yes. 39%. 33. Yes. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, there you go. This was the big hit at my tasting up in uh, that I did recently. Everybody liked it. I see why. I actually believed, um, yeah, great bottle of wine. Love it. Straight up A minus, and that rolls in. I believe at thirteen, no, fourteen bucks. Thirteen ninety, yeah, fourteen bucks. So there you go. GSM blends, Cote de Rhone, same thing. Uh, I do wish, and I have to say it. Oh, actually, this one does say it on the back. Uh, the Pierre, sorry about that. Beeler is 63% uh, uh, Grenache, 37% Syrah. So they don't have any Mouvet in this one, um, which with Cote de Rhone, in many cases, you don't get the composition of the wine. But those are the three grapes that they use primarily. They might throw some Cinso in every time. There you go, pretty cool. And that, I, I, I'm just impressed that the Han did so well in this lineup. Really impressed with that. So if you have any questions, if you want me to review something, if you have some ideas, uh, hook up with me on at Stan the Wine Man on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook, friend me up, ask me some questions there. Uh, check out my blog, StanTheWineMan.com and the Blue Collar Wine Guy on the Seattle PI. And if you're watching this for the first time, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. Hey, Dad. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. I just left the studio. Here we are in Harlem. Everybody's here but the police. And they'll be here anyway. It's high time. So catch this song. Here it is.